Hi, this is Gregor Grog, and today I was going to show you how to use uh, my robot lab as a distributed oscope. Um, first, the hardware. This is a little Arduino board, and here is the world's cheapest sensor. This is a, a little wire stuck into um, analog pin zero. And in addition to that, we're actually going to attach to two separate boards. The other board is a bare bones board right over here, which is a Arduino knockoff. And it too has the world's cheapest sensor, a little wire stuck into um, analog zero input. So um, now they're both connected to this computer, and um, I've just loaded the PDE into both of the boards. And now I've just fired up um, my robot lab, or MRL. And now I'm going to load two Arduino services that kind of represent the two boards. Uh, the first one I'm going to call is BBB for the bare bones board. And the second one I'm going to call old because it's an old Arduino board. And some other things I'm going to load is sensor monitor. I'm going to call this sensors. Okay, and for giggles, I'm going to load um, dun 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 dun, there we go, speech module, which um, requires the third party libraries to work. Speech, and one more thing, I'm going to put a remote adapter on this as well. Remote. Remote. There we go. So right now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven services running. Um, we'll flip over and one of those services is the GUI service which um, is kind of a portal or view into all the rest. So if you go up here um, I know that the BBB is off of this COM port and the old Arduino one is off of this COM port and uh, let's see go to GUI I'm going to I wonder if you hopefully you can see this um, let's see each one of these represents one of the services here and some of these lines represent message paths. Um, some are automatically connected because the GUI um, assumes that you want to see certain parts of this. For example, the uh, sensor monitor itself, the little viewfinder. We'll get back to that. Anyway, um, I wanted to connect this one, this sensor monitor out, and this is uh, publish pin alert text. So uh, again, I'll show you what this does. And we want that to go to the speech, speech, speak string. Okay, so that's message path is now set up. So if I go over sensors now, um, you can see traces and alerts. We don't have any set up at the moment. Right now I'm going to add a trace to um, the BBB. Um, and this is pin zero. We'll call it BBB zero. BBB zero. And then add it. And there you see the trace. So uh, this little oscillation is um, the wire stuck into that card. And uh, if you see my finger getting close to it, you can actually see um, it change, which is kind of neat. So it oscillates um, more wildly as I get my finger closer and closer to it. And then um, now it's less. One of the things that I noticed is kind of interesting is if you add another trace, this is kind of neat. This is BBB1 analog input. I'll just call it BBB1. Watch this now. 
Well, so they dive. If you read two pins, the voltage values um, dive, which I thought was kind of neat. Um, all of these are non-grounded, free-floating. Um, you won't get the same results if you ground any of the wires. So I'm going to back that one out, get rid of this one, and this time add, oh, see, it's, that's taken off again. Um, I'm going to add Arduino, the old Arduino pin zero and uh, call it old zero and look at this <laughs> you see this one is uh, an old Arduino board and it's uncapped um, one of the features of the BBB board is that they put a capacitor um, on the analog inputs and here you can see the huge well it kinda looks like a big difference between the two um, the readings of the Arduino. So these are two separate boards connected to the same computer. And if I get close to the wire on the Arduino, it gets even more wild. Whoa! Okay. And if you touch it, of course it freaks out. So the next thing I'm going to do is add an alert. And I'll add it off of the BBB pin zero and a little dialogue comes up where you can fill out um, you I'm typing with one hand touched my BBB and set the threshold to 800 why not add it these are little one-shot alerts and since I wired the uh, uh, message path for an alert to fire off and hit, hit the speech module then what you'll see is uh, hopefully I go over here and touch now so that the red trace goes over the 800 the alert will fire you touched my BBB <laughs> okay uh, so that's you can wire that to anything uh, programmatically um, this was out any programming but um, you certainly could um, make things activate or um, turn off or whatever depending on what you want to do and this <clears throat> I found is really a good kind of visual display of what is kind of going on um, for example what a big difference the cap capacitor makes on the uh, our old Arduino board compared to the BBB let's see Okay, hopefully I'm going to show you the distributed part of MRL um, or MRL as an O-scope. Uh, right now uh, I've restarted MRL and I'm going to load the Arduino service twice just like before. One for the bare bones board and the other one for the old Arduino. And in addition to that I'm going to load a remote adapter service which allows access from other MRL instances we'll call that one remote um, and on this we're going to attach it to the appropriate COM port and this guy the other COM port and uh, some of the things that you can do in MRL is you can tear down services as well or get rid of them shut them off uh, right now we don't need the services anymore and uh, this little button sends this panel to the custom tab, but this little button, <laughs> this little button, shuts um, the service down. And so I am shut the service down. I don't need uh, the GUI service either, so I'm going to get rid of that. So even though it looks like it's completely shut down, it's still running three services. The two Arduino boards and the remote adapter service. So if you go over here, um, this is a laptop on the same network, and uh, I loaded uh, a sensor monitor on it, but it doesn't have any uh, uh, Arduino boards. So uh, if I go over here and put in the appropriate IP address and hit connect um, theoretically, let's see if it works oh, 
Uh, it's kind of cheesy, but when you connect to a remote instance, you have to hit uh, refreshes button under the GUI tab. And theoretically, ah, sweet. So here we have the bare bones board connected to the appropriate COM port and the old Arduino and the remote adapter. So um, the services have now kind of meshed in. So going over to the sensors, which is running locally, also you can look over the GUI thing. Uh, each one of these green blocks represents a uh, remote service and all the uh, orange ones represent local services. You can uh, map functions um, that send data to other functions. Uh, choo -choo -choo -choo, string. Um, I don't know what this wouldn't have a string. That wouldn't have a string either. Um, but you can map them across uh, to remote services or local services. It doesn't really make a difference. Um, so what we're going to do is use the sensor monitor and add a BBB trace to analog pin 1 and call it like we did before BBB 0. Whoa! And there we are! Yay! Um, so this is going in <laughs> this piece of hardware, uh, analog sensor, a complicated wire sensor, um, and going into this computer and then being displayed. This is running headless and being displayed over here. And I'll um, touch it again just so you can see cause and effect. There we go. So alerts and all that other kind of stuff work as well and I could grab another trace from the other one. Uh, so it doesn't make any difference of how many services are running or how many instances are running. They can all kind of connect to one another and talk to one another. So, uh,